Welcome to listener-supported Rust News. Let's talk about Rust 1.80.0, which was released today, July 25th, 2024, thanks to the hard work of hundreds of contributors. Thanks to increasing listener support, in addition to covering the top 10 most interesting things not mentioned in the blog post today, I will also cover the highlights of the blog post itself. So let's start with the blog post highlights. Number one, lazy lock and lazy sell are actually super interesting. For years, people have been turning to the lazy static crate for lazily evaluating static variables, aka global variables. In general, it's best to avoid that sort of thing, but when you need it, you need it. And now it's built into the standard library as lazy lock and lazy sell. What do these do? Let's run through it. Here we have a quick example of lazy lock in action. If we run through it real quick, we have the obvious imports. And then out in module scope, we declare our lazy lock wrapping an instant. But even though it looks like we're initializing it, we aren't really initializing our time variable at this point. The special thing about lazy lock and lazy cell is that they don't actually run the initialization code on the right hand of the equal sign until the first time they are accessed and only the first time they are accessed. So in the main function, this start instant will be initialized first, and then we create a scope in which we both launch a child thread, which accesses our time static variable, and also attempt the same thing in this thread. Whichever actually reaches the static variable first will cause it to be initialized. Whichever thread reaches the static variable second will get the same value as the first. Super useful. Lazy cell is the exact same thing, except that it doesn't implement the sync trait, so it isn't thread safe. So it can't be used for regular static variables, but it can be used in thread local statics, meaning that each thread would have its own distinct initialized version of the variable. Number two, back in Rust 1.79, we talked about the compiler's new ability to warn about config names and values that it doesn't know about. In Rust 1.80, Cargo enables that checking by default. So look out for some new warnings. Number three, up until now, only inclusive ranges could be used in patterns, which was confusing to many poor souls, such as myself, who couldn't fathom why. Instead of having to specify one minus a constant to use in an inclusive range and then use the actual constant at the start of the next range, you can now use the same constant in both places with exclusive ranges, which can be much nicer, especially since we recently gained those lints, which warn you if you have a slight gap in your ranges. That's the highlights from the blog. From here on out, I'm covering my curated list of the top 10 interesting things not on the blog, starting with number four. C23 is the informal name for the next standard for the C programming language. The formal name is sufficient complicated that most people avoid it. Anyway, C23 introduced the ability for functions to have only variadic parameters, with no fixed parameters at all, whereas before they had to have at least one fixed parameter. Since Rust interoperates with C via FFI, it now supports this too with extern functions. Interoperability for the win. Number five, the for loops over fallibles lint already noticed when you looped over a fallible like an option or a result and warned you that it was more readable to use an if let statement. And now this lint also gives you the same warning when you loop over references to a fallible as well, expanding the scope of the lint quite a bit. Number six, four functions from the standard library that deal with determining size and alignment have been added to the standard prelude. The standard prelude is the items from the standard library which are always imported by default. The four functions are size of and align of, which determine the size and alignment of types, and size of val and align of val, which determine the size and alignment of values. The stated intention for adding these functions to the standard library is to encourage always using them by lowering the friction to finding them. The hope is that people will stop hard coding integer values, which results in code breaking across platforms. Number seven, an optimization in the lowercase handling introduced a bug where the Greek letter sigma could be lowercase to the wrong letter. This has been fixed. I mostly included this one on the list because I finally learned the name of the letter sigma, which I always just thought of as the sum symbol in math. Number eight, a bunch of bit-related functionality was added to the IP address types. 
Here they are, let's go through them. First, the types gain associated constants that simply represent how many bits the type occupies. Second, they gain methods that take an IP address and convert it to bits, returning it as an unsigned integer with the appropriate bits. Yay, finally. And last, the from bits associated function takes an unsigned integer and constructs an IP address out of it. These IP address types are starting to get useful. Number nine, macro metavars in unsafe is a new worn by default lint that looks for macros that expand meta variables in an unsafe block. In other words, it warns you if a macro takes input you give it and puts it in an unsafe block because that's kind of surprising and macros shouldn't generally do that. Number 10, doc lazy continuation is a new worn by default lint that looks at your documentation comments and warns you about issues with your markdown where it looks like you tried to create a table or a list but messed something up and ended up with a lazy continued paragraph instead. Nice. Number 11, the cargo fix command now works when there is no IPv4 network present. Before Rust 1.80, in order to coordinate diagnostics, Cargo launched a TCP server listening on the IPv4 loopback address only. Now it listens on both the IPv4 and IPv6 loopbacks. Number 12, cargo commands like cargo add and cargo remove, which rewrite the cargo.toml file, now preserve its permissions on Unix-like operating systems. This should make life nicer for anyone who's trying to run these commands while as a different user than the owner of the file. Number 13, the option enum has gained a new method called take if. Let's check it out. Here's an example of take if in action. First, we create a variable named x, which is a sum 42. Then we call take if on x. Take if takes a predicate, which is any function or closure which takes the wrapped type and returns a boolean. If the predicate returns true, then the value is taken out of the option and none is left in its place. If the predicate returns false, then take if returns none. So here the predicate will be true, which means the value in x is taken out and is replaced with none, and the taken value is assigned to the new variable. That's it for today. I'd like to thank my existing public sponsors and welcome two new sponsors since the last video. One individual and one organization level sponsor. It is all your sponsorships that made this video today possible and longer than the last one. I'm now 34% of the way towards my initial funding goal. Want even more Rust news? Sponsor me on GitHub and I'll make it happen. The more sponsors I get, the more news I can produce. Speaking of sponsors, it's time for an update on my request for a sponsorship from the Rust Foundation. I've been notified that the Rust Foundation would be happy to make a one-off sponsorship award. I'm working through the process now, so I expect to tell you all about it in the next video. And finally, thank you everyone who posts supportive, encouraging, and understanding comments on my videos. These really help me want to keep producing Rust news. Today's cover artwork is by Adam Harvey, a software engineer on staff with the Rust Foundation. This Ferris is depicted as holding a cup of coffee, suggesting that Adam is aware of the 2018 study by Maddie Green on the effects of caffeine on hermit crabs. This study clearly showed a drastic visible change in behavior of hermit crabs dosed with minute amounts of caffeine. And yet, Adam here has supplied Ferris, a small crab, with a full mug of coffee, seemingly heedless of the fact that caffeine is, indeed, a drug, you monster. Consequently, Ferris appears to be so jittery that his very color is vibrating beyond the boundaries of his shell. Fortunately for Ferris, there are numerous 12-step programs to combat caffeine addiction. Perhaps they come with cake. If you want more videos like this, sponsor me on GitHub. This was a triumph. Analyzer. A needle analyzer. It's got to be analyzer, like energizer. Energizer. I'm guessing is how it's pronounced.